Hi, this is Sarah, and uh, I felt like I hadn't really explained Project 13 um, and, and why I was going to be joining it. Um, and I realized that, um, for instance, <laughs> I am a lot. That's really good. Uh, and I uh, a lot. Oh, God. So if you're somebody who subscribed because you were like, Project 12 was awesome, I bet you might be fun. Articulation is not my strong suit. I apologize now. Because I'm not going to remember to apologize for it later. Probably. Anyway. But even though I had a very small viewer base um, to begin with, anyway, there's, you know, a couple of people that have been watching, for instance, I try to remember weekly to do just a quick fitness vlog just to update on my progress. And so, oh, and um, I review things, um, anything really, I get my grubby little hands on. Depends what it is, if I give a crap about it, if I feel it's something worth talking about. Like, for instance, in a very brief uh, chat about the course I'm, I'm doing, which is my medical transcriptionist course um, through ICS. So I feel like when I'm completely done that program, I am going to talk about it. I'd love, actually, to do a quick review on uh, the company that I work for, um, Daily Transcription, but I'm not sure how well that would work. Um, it's a good company, actually. I really, really enjoy working for them. So I feel like, you know, if you didn't know what they were, it'd be cool to talk about. But um, that's not what I'm talking about today. Well, right now. I mean, I'll probably talk about that in about 10 minutes because there's a couple videos I wanted to put together today. But Project 13, um, I got an, um, a YouTube message from a guy called Chris Weir, who is apparently going to be watching these videos apparently all this week. So, hi Chris, I'm Sarah, it's nice to meet you, thank you for the message. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I wound up getting that message. I vaguely remember something about Project 12 last year. I have no idea, I'm, I, I don't know, I guess I lucked out. It's a cool idea, and I very much intend to progress with it. That's fully my intention. I realize it will be difficult. And mostly, I also realize it's probably not going to be very entertaining. But who knows? It could be cool. It could work out well. You could enjoy it. You could wind up spending basically hours of your life watching me talk about random crap and my dog. But that's what the internet is about. Like, for instance, I didn't take into account that people actually read anything down in the doobly-doo. Um, and yet somebody took the challenge today to ask me any question. So, thanks internet for renewing my faith in humanity, we'll say. Um, there's not a lot of uh, variation in my backgrounds. I'm going to warn you right now, majority of my videos I actually film in my bathroom because it has the best lighting. That says it all right there. You're not going to see a lot of walking and vlogging from this girl that I can see right now. You'll probably, because I've vaguely figured out how to do a little bit of editing, and yes, yes, when I actually bother to cut footage together, I am using the YouTube editor because I did actually have um, an editing software on my computer. I was like, I have editing software on my computer somewhere. Um, but it turns out it was a timed trial, so it's not on there anymore. Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, for the amount of skill that I have currently at the moment, I don't see a lot of point in changing it up. I mean, to be perfectly, perfectly honest, if I was going to do anything to improve the quality of the videos, I think, first off, I'd stop filming them on my goddamn phone. That would be my start, and then, like, maybe I'd look at thinking about editing. Maybe I'd consider lighting that didn't involve 
Well, I'll show you my lighting right now, as we are in my bathroom. It's, of course, so you can see, it's a very lovely light fixture. Um, but, you know, it's, yeah, <laughs> they're not even all proper incandescents, like one of them is a power saver, fluorescent twisty light, so probably coming up a bit yellow, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's the deal with Project 13, um, just basically vlogging every day, getting in the practice of talking to the camera. I've been doing basically irregular vlogging um, for about nine months now. Like, I'll be filming in a few minutes the Fatty Fitty vlog week 41. So there we go, 41 weeks. Whatever that translates into in months because I'm just so lazy. I think it's 41, it might be 42. Anyway, look, that doesn't matter. That's just a thing. Um, so today though, I feel like it's important to talk about something that means a lot to me. Um, and there are two things which I never wanted to have to connect again. Um, one, one important thing in my life is that I hate cancer. It's a horrible thing. So if you're watching this and you have the means, unfortunately I'm financially not in a state where I can. But whenever I am, I do, you know, donate to cancer research. Personally, I make the choice to donate to cancer research rather than like make a wish foundation and stuff like that. because. Quite frankly, I would love for Make-A-Wish and all the foundations like it to be made obsolete, and I think the only way to do that is through research. Cancer's hard because it's so varied. There's so many different ways it happens. There's so many different ways to treat it. You know, one particular cell type of tumor responds to treatment completely different than another, but we're constantly making strides. And unlike virals, Thankfully, cancer is only ever, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't adapt like a virus. I like to think that, you know, unlike HIV, which unfortunately is very tricksome, I like to think that cancer and curing it is an achievable goal. Um, and the other thing that's really important, and if you knew me well, you'd know, um, is that uh, I love my family. And today, we found out that my Uncle Jerry has prostate cancer, which thankfully is, you know, they've caught it very early, and he has surgery next month, um, and radiation treatment is going to be, like, as soon as they feel it's safe to do afterward. They're going to obviously test the sample. They're they're fairly certain it's completely, like, encapsulated and in one spot, but it's one of those things that you can never know until they get it out of there and they have a really good look at it under the microscope and just, you know, hope to God it's completely encapsulated. And cancer is such a funny thing because it takes so little to metastasize and they can never say, really, oh yeah, we definitely got every single cell because, of course, it only takes a few cells busting off into your bloodstream, migrating to greener pastures and setting up shop somewhere else, and then you're fucked. I don't believe in fooling with cancer. That said, from what I've been told so far, you know, I feel very positive about this, and I feel like, you know, he's he's in his 50s. I. I guess I'd like to think that hopefully he's at an age where it'll start being a slow grower and that he'll respond well to treatment and that everything's gonna go okay. I mean, I already have one uncle who's sort of actively fighting it. Um, and this is you now his, his brother. So um, these are both my mom's brothers, I should say. And 
Yeah. But I think this affected me more than when my Uncle Lori was diagnosed because I know my Uncle Jerry a bit better and you know those people in your life where you're like nobody could ever say anything really bad about this person. You know what I mean? Like it's almost impossible to make them angry. They are absolutely nice. They will do anything in the world for anybody. You know, he's absolutely the sweetest man in the world. And he has had it very, very hard through his life. You know, he's definitely, he's definitely an overcomer, as some people would say. So, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about a plan that I had, and I'm going to tell you about it as it progresses, but today we're going to talk about how do you help somebody when there's nothing that you can really do to help them. And one of the, I suppose this is really the third thing that's really important to me is that I think that making people feel better can be just as important, if not more important than medical intervention, whether that's praying with them or just being there for them, taking care of them, making them laugh, because studies have shown anything that gives them a more positive outlook, anything that lifts them emotionally can have a huge impact on how they respond to treatment. So this is just an idea for anybody else who might have you know, somebody in their life going through something similar right now, be it a long-term illness, maybe even just a short-term acute illness, like maybe their life isn't in danger, but they're in a hell of a lot of discomfort right now and you gotta figure out what to do to make them feel better. So my plan is pretty simple. It's a tried and tested idea. My aunt called it a sunshine basket and apparently, like a lot of organizations around here, if you're like part of a group or something like that, we'll totally do it. Um, I knew it was a thing, I didn't know there was a name to put to it, but I actually like that, so we'll go with that, the sunshine basket. I was just calling it a basket of love. But without trying to make it sexy or anything, because it's my uncle and that would be weird. Anyway, so the concept's very simple. Anybody who wants to participate can participate. It makes it really easy because the person that's receiving this basket gets to feel like, you know, however many people really do care and they really are thinking about them, they just didn't want to disturb them at a time when they, they're recovering from surgery, they're very, very sick, maybe they're going through like chemotherapy treatment. You know, you want the person to know that you're thinking about them. You know, you really want them to feel that they're loved and that you care but at the same time, you know better than to disturb them because quite frankly, they are in a situation where they're a hot mess right now. And it's not that they wouldn't love company or distraction, but you know, you don't, you don't want them to feel embarrassed because they're, you know, being sick all the time because they're in treatment, you know? And they don't really have the energy or maybe the patience to put up with a bunch of people. And I, you know, I, I've always thought that like after a while, like having a lot of well-wishers showing up at your house probably gets a bit annoying when you're not feeling very well. So, very, very simple. Basket. Everybody who wants to participate picks one thing. Now this is where it gets tricky because apparently this is too difficult for my mom. She's like, well, I could put in two or three or five. No, everybody picks one thing because this is where it really comes in. You pick that one thing in the world that when you're not feeling well, something that makes you feel better. Maybe it's food, maybe it's drink. Like for me, I'm making him a little snuggly blanket so he can curl up on the couch because the one thing that makes me feel better, and I'm even gonna stick in a note to this effect, is cuddling up on the couch under a blanket watching terrible daytime TV. Because when I don't feel good, that's what I want. My mom is putting in a bottle of Bailey's Irish cream because, you know, secretly she's a liquor pig. Lush. I didn't call my mom a liquor pig. Shut up. Um, what else? Like, my dad's gonna put in a book. 
my aunt's gonna chuck in a pair of hand knitted <coughs> socks. One of my other aunts is gonna bake in a cake. You know, all the sorts of things that like, when you're not feeling well, you're like, this is what makes me feel better, be it emotionally or physically, you know, just anything that when shit is not good right now, you know, it just it lifts you up in some way. Or it comforts you, you know? It's very important. And the greatest thing is wrapping them, um, which is not something I even thought of. I just thought of giving him a big basket of crap because I thought he'd like that. I thought it would be nice and he could know that everybody loves him and everybody cares. But my aunt said, no, no, you wrap everything. And then they can open it up. So, like, if they're having a really bad point, they can, you know, they can open up. Or if, like, they're having a lot of bad days, maybe they can only really get to one at a time. But it's, you know, it's a nice lift. Anyway, that's just, that's what we're doing. And uh, that's sort of, I think that's sort of where I am today. It's like, um, you know, it's like you kind of get up and you realize that that's the state of the affairs in your world at the moment. And it just sort of, you know, there are days you, you get up and you're like, oh, it's okay, everything's okay. And then you realize sometimes God just is not fair. It's not cool. But like I said, I have hope, so I'm going to keep having hope. And that's how that's going to be. Anyway, um, I'd like to say thank you so much for putting up with my rambling. Uh, if you'd like to continue watching, I'm sure I've put up other crap on this channel. If you'd like to have a look at any of my other crap, please, by all means, go to my channel page. I may or may not even remember to put an annotation. If I remember to put an annotation, it's going to look like this. Fatty to Fitty Vlogs. Book Reviews other reviews and I will try to remember right now when I'm finished to make playlists of those things if not then what you're actually seeing is me pointing at nothing like a crazy person which could also be amusing for you anyway thank you so much for watching um, if you know you're somebody from Project 13 and you're also doing this and you happen to catch one of my videos, um, then hello! And I will look forward to watching yours too. And we we can do we can get a thing going on, which would be very cool. Anyway, that's what was going on in my life today. That's my vlog for day uh, today. I thought that'd be much better than updating you on multiple times today to say that I was just knitting and watching Babylon 5. I'm gonna go study actually after I'm done filming, but uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and um, I'll see you in my next video. Okay, bye. -bye. Ooh, by the way, if somebody's gonna ask me questions about my peeing habits again, just gonna throw this out there. You can ask, but I don't think I'm gonna answer anymore. I think the real thing is, if you're asking me, it's probably because you're doing something weird. Seriously, if you have to ask somebody else if they actually invest in personal hygiene in any way, shape, or form, then you should be doing it. If it's one of those, do you do it? Because I don't, but I don't want you to judge me. Just do it. Like the Nike commercials. I, I don't know. I'm still tired. Fuck it. Bye.